Mike, everybody here all accounted for? Yeah, uh, Buster Screen informed us that he was going to retire. Um, so, you know, respect that decision. Really um, respect Buster as a person, as a player. Um, but, but he made a decision which he felt like was best for him and his family. And, you know, we'll respect that and support him however we can. Everybody else on hand? Yes. Since mini camp, uh, from trailing in terms of whether it's physical uh, progress or, or medical progress, whatever the case may be, what have, what have you seen since then? Uh, he's made good progress. I mean, he's put together a couple good days here with the with the rookies and some of the injured guys, and you know, hopefully he can build on that as we um, as we get back out there tomorrow with everybody. Do you expect him not to have any limitations in terms of reps or anything like that? Um, as of now, I mean, we'll just and every day is a new day, but. Um, there was every day is, you know, something different with each guy. So, you know, we'll approach those and handle those how we can. But I don't, you know, I don't foresee anything. I mean, but things can always come up. How much do you important looking for do you place him? on that first full team meeting, and, and how much do you, how much thought do you put into what you're going to say at that? Well, I mean, I always try. You know, I mean, I never, you know, as coaches, you never want to waste anybody's time. You know, we're here a, a lot, and, and they know how important. Every coach's information that they can get to the player and their ability to teach, whether that's a special teams meeting, individual unit meetings, squad. So I'm always conscious of, of what I say in there that, you know, I don't want to just meet just to meet, but uh, it's an important meeting, you know, to have the, the full squad together. Um, you know, there's a lot of introductions. For example, you know, you know Joey will talk um, on behalf of the equipment staff and, and the things that we expect, explain. Uh, the guardian caps that you guys will see and probably have seen around the league. Um, that was a decision that, that we all came to agreement on. That's a, I think um, the science and the data is to a point now where um, that's, that's best for the player, for, for their health and safety. Um, when you talk about impact, you know, the, the, the force and the amount of impact, it can reduce it, you know, up to 20% if, if two players are, are wearing that, that's pretty significant. So, you know, everybody will wear those. Can we, this is like. So that's, uh, and that's, that's a change. That technology uh, has changed. It wasn't that significant uh, in the past couple years, but, but I think with their technology and, and what they've designed, uh, I think it's become, those are pretty significant numbers. How would you categorize progress uh, for Traylon Burks? Like this week, upcoming week, like what would you say is, is progress for him? I don't know what, you know, I mean, I, I define that as just making sure that you're, you're doing the little things, that you understand where to go as we continue to add installation. Uh, there's a lot of information that we give them uh, that you can come out and compete. I mean, you know, the biggest thing for training camp is, is earning the trust of, of teammates and coaches, not only, you know, developing um, and, and trying to improve and, and uh, on all the things that we're going to need throughout the season, but it's also, you know, about trust and being where you're supposed to be for the quarterback and, um, you know, doing those things day in and day out with a, with some consistency. Big, big picture from the end of the last two seasons, is there something organizationally you guys have, have learned or want to strive to do differently than get you? get you closer to where you want to go? Well, I mean, every year, every day we come to work, we're, we're going to try to figure out ways to, to win championships. But I don't think we're, we're there necessarily. I don't think I'm going to start at the back and, and move forward and, and work backwards. I'm going to start uh, with today, which was a conditioning test and look fantastic. And, and they understand and our players understand how we have to play and, and the condition in which we have to be in to, to play that style of football um, you know, through the course of a long season. You know, we, we know that, you know, you have to be at your best um, in, in those games. There's no, you know, there's no do-overs. There's no uh, makeups or, hey, we get to play them again in three weeks. Uh, so, you know, that's when you have to be at your best and, and all those keys and, and the game plan and, and, and our performances, coaching and playing have to be at our best. Or, or just did that change anything? How, how that came mm, no, we didn't play very well. You know, we didn't coach very well. I don't, you know, 
that's uh, the, the plan will be different. I mean, there'll be differences in the practice schedule. Um, you know, just trying to be conscious of, you know, the workload and the third day and, and just using the, the data that we get uh, from our staff and from the, you know, the players um, association and, and, and the NFL doctors and, and BioCore and, and all those things, just trying to, to make sure that we're doing right by our players and that, that we're, we're giving them exactly what they need to, to feel confident when the season comes. Balance, like I guess, Mike, for some of the older guys, the veterans, and wanting to get them work, but don't want to yeah, overdo it. We've talked about this before. Everybody's going to have a plan, and and I, I try to. I mean, I do explain that to the team. You know, where where a player like Des Fitzpatrick is compared to, you know, Robert Woods or you know Jeff Simmons and Kevin Byard. That you know, these there's a lot of guys that have played a lot of football for us, and that doesn't mean that they're not going to be working. But I don't know, you know, everybody's plan is going to be different each and every day. Uh, and there's a balance uh, to that to making sure that guys uh, are getting what they need, but also, you know, being conscious of, of how much they're going to play for us. How do you feel about the way Traylon attacked his health this summer? And is he in a position to get through camp every day? Well, I mean, he's put together two good days. I mean, I, I'm not going to predict, you know, who's going to be out there every day right now. Uh, Corey, I can't, I can't do that. I won't do that. You know, we're focusing on, you know, just daily improvement with, with each and every player. And, uh, you know, we're, we're excited to keep working with them. And, uh, but that's going to be the same for everybody. It's just trying to focus on, on today and how we approach and how we attack today. Uh, we'll have a lot of meetings today, and then we'll be out there, you know, bright and early tomorrow. The, corner, the cornerback room was already young. You lose Buster. Uh, do you feel like you need to get some, some at least an experienced voice in there for camp, another experienced voice? Well, there? John and I, you know, we haven't had a whole lot of time to discuss, and, and we'll, we'll see who's out there. We'll need to replace the, the body. You know, those are things that, you know, we've looked at over the course of a couple of years or how many guys you need at each position and, and working and making sure that, you know, guys are, are staying um, – you know that you can get through practice and, and function, but also somebody that can that can help contribute. So, um, you know, we're, nothing I would say is is in, is imminent right now as far as replacing him. What kind of progress do you are you hoping to see from Malik from the beginning of camp towards the end? From who? Malik. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Um, we we talk about you know I mean just the the presence in the huddle first and foremost is being able to. Uh, command the huddle, um, you know, getting guys lined up. The operation, I, I think, is something that's critical as this installation starts to mount. Can can you handle and, and fix mistakes and see guys where the alignments are and put guys, you know, that's when I know that, that everybody knows what they're doing is when a quarterback or safety or linebacker can tell another position, hey, you know, you're supposed to be off or you're supposed to be over here. Uh, those are things that I would look for. Um, made, made, a, made a lot of correct decisions in the spring, uh, but, but timing probably wasn't where it needed to be, and therefore um, accuracy uh, starts to go down. So I, I try to d explain all that is the decision making was, was really good uh, for, for a rookie quarterback, um, but the timing has to improve, and we're hopeful that you know, when the timing improves that, that the accuracy improves as well. And how, how will the preseason games be their advantageous for well, you know, that's, that's where you're going to have to, you know, where we're not, where we stay away from the quarterback. You know, we're, our guys do a great job of practicing against each other, uh, taking care of each other. We're, we're, we, we, we work hard, we rush, whatever we're doing. But we're staying away from the quarterback. And until you're out there in this league and uh, taking some hits, which you know, toughness is not, gonna, is not a concern. It's just those are going to be important that, that you're out there and, and standing in the pocket, stepping up in the pocket. Uh, and, and throwing and passes and, and finding throwing throwing lanes. Mike, how do you feel like the, the plan you created with uh, Jeff Simmons went along um, during mandatory minicamp, and do you expect him to practice when you guys open up practice tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, I expect Jeff to practice, and you know, we'll see how he feels and see how you know it looks, and figure out what's best for him. You know, he'd be one of those guys that um, you know, would have a somewhat different plan maybe potentially but um i would imagine everybody that's that's healthy will, will be out there ready to go tomorrow woods and, and caleb do you have to ramp them up or, or the fact that they, they're, they're doing some things i would say that they're probably participating 
in 90% of the, the stuff uh, that we did the first couple days. Uh, there's some things that, that we're holding them out of. Um, but the nice thing is, is they've been able to, when we're doing those drills, to go over there and, and find ways to, to work for a few minutes with each other, which kind of makes it nice. They're both going through the same process and they're mirrored positions. So, um, you know, for example, if during a, the open field tackle drill, right? We, we don't want them doing that right now, but they can go over and they can work releases or they'll work something else. Uh, and we've asked them to, to kind of come to us with a plan of things that they would like to, we've given them a couple things and then also, you know, ask them to kind of think of some things that they can do to, to work with each other during those um, five or six minutes. Kind of Darryl, although he's, he's 100 percent apparently, but coming back from injury does... I didn't even hear who you said, Teron, to I, start. I said for Derek Henry. For Derek. Right, with, with him, you know, good to go coming back from the injury. Do you change, like, your approach or how, how you work him during camp and in preseason games, or is that something that, you know, is going to be status quo? Uh, no, I mean, there'll be, you know, he'll have some involvement. You know, and then I think that there'll come a time where we'll, you know, do some different things with them. Uh, and then, you know, I wouldn't anticipate seeing Derek in, in the preseason games. How, what kind of mentality are you looking for from Dylan? Um, you've talked before about kind of the guys who say they're aggressive but say it in a meek voice and, and you don't buy it. He, I, he hasn't talked in a way that's like, I have to seize the position. Well, well I think that... Um, I'm hoping that the, the momentum from the spring carries over to, to training camp. Um, excited to see him work. Uh, fantastic uh, condition. Uh, I think his technique's improved. I think he's, he's more comfortable in what we're doing and what we're asking him to do and, and with his techniques. And so, um, you know, we'll just we'll base it on each day, and, and, and uh, he's excited to go earn a position. You look at those two spots, Mike, as, as open competitions and then camp left guard and right back. Yeah, I mean, I think until somebody absolutely solidifies that, well, you know, I mean, Jamarco and Brew will work, uh, Dylan and, and Nick and, you know, every, all the other tackles that we have. But, um, you know, we're going to have to line up with five guys tomorrow in, in the first group and, you know, see what that looks like after after the first practice and then and then give everybody an opportunity to compete. Do you really expect those the, the offensive line to sort itself out during the group sessions with the, with the um, Cardinals? Well, we, we're going to practice against Tampa first, and, and then the Cardinals. Um, th those are great opportunities for for guys. We ask uh, offensive linemen, um, you know, do you have to know the guy you're rushing against, right? What's the skill set? Is this a, a, a speed guy? Is this a quick guy? Is this a big guy? And when you go against our guys, they have a plan because they have an idea. That's they see him every single day, and so. You know, Tampa is going to bring in a new set of uh, guys that are going to be fantastic, uh, that are going to allow our guys something different, and, and so will Arizona. So those reps are valuable uh, to be able to see a bunch of different um, skill sets, body types, uh, change from one day to the next. Okay, this first day uh, maybe wasn't very good. How can I adjust and, and fix and correct some of those things? No different than the receivers, uh, whether it's a big receiver or it's a quicker receiver. You know I mean? Are you talking about... Rondell Moore, you're talking about Moore, you're talking about Evans, you know, from, from different guys around the league. We do that each and every week, you know, that's what the game plan is, and then you try to practice and, you know, have somebody on the show team, you know, recreate that person. You talked about being great around Ryan, and, and you clarified kind of what you meant about that at, at the Combine, but with with AJ gone and the personnel shifts that you have, do you feel like the personnel around Ryan is better? Well, I don't want to rely on on talent. I don't want to be a coach that relies on talent. I want to be, um, I want to coach fundamentals, uh, technique. I want to teach. I want to make sure that they play with great effort. And and I know that we're talented. So, um, my my job is to not try to rely on talent. I, I want to try to coach. Um, you know, there there's a certain way that we want to play the game, and uh, when we do. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're a good football team. And when we turn it over um, and we, we don't protect the guy with the football, uh, whether that's a quarterback, a running back, a receiver, um, you know, we're not very good. You know, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't operate like that. The teams that, that win big generally have a degree of superstar talent, no? Um, you know, I don't know if anybody right now, uh, you know, we haven't played any games, so... 
know, there's no stats for this year. Every year is a new year, and we're going to expect um, your best players have to play good in this league to, to win, if that's what you mean. Just to clarify, Mike, I didn't, wasn't sure if I heard you correctly. You mentioned about Jeffrey Simmons having a different type of plan than most other guys. Why does he have a different type of plan? Well, he, I mean, he was just an example. There's going to be numerous guys, you know, whether it's Danico Autry, whether it's Ben Jones, Taylor Lewan. Um, it won't look any different tomorrow, but you know, in, in in a few few days, in a few weeks, you know, maybe maybe it is different. You know, it's not not just Jeff. I use that as an example. We have a handful of guys uh, that have played a lot of snaps for us, um, and, and just trying to make sure that they're ready for the football. See, I want Jeffrey to play as many snaps um, in the manner in which he plays them, which is physical. And, and violent and fast as he possibly can. And so I have to try to, with our training staff and our, and our strength staff, try to find out what the best plan for that is. LeJuan swore off social media. How hard do you think it'll be for him to live up to that vow? Oh, he's in there shaking and he's holding his phone. And... <laughs> you think that this can only help him, though, season ahead? Um, I think we all kind of sometimes get caught up in what's going on out there much different than when you and I, you know, were in high school or in college. You know, that a lot of social media is, is fantasy land. It's everybody's uh, best moments, shiny moments, but we all deal with, um, you know, we all deal with adversity. We all deal with days where we don't quite feel so great. And uh, probably getting off social media wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad thing for all of us. For certain offensive players, how important is it to make sure that Ryan gets the reps with yeah. the receivers? It, you know, those are things. You know, when do you do this, and what do you maybe take off some individual period and just try to go with the team period? What, what what's the best way to build continuity? Uh, the timing that we talked about, the trust. You know, all those things um, are reasons why you practice. So, you know, hopefully, um, you know, we can we can manage it. Um, you know, through through certain ways. Mike, with the challenge of being the number one seed last year, how do you approach coming into this new season, kind of drawing the line, that was then, this is now, when you have so much continuity on staff, on the roster, uh, and, and overall with this franchise? I mean, it, you've been in the NFL for a long time. That doesn't mean anything. You know, that's, that's not going to carry over. One week doesn't carry over to the next. Um, you know, if you don't play well in this league, you're going to lose. And if you play good, you have a chance to win. You know, those guys, you know, we all know that. So um, you know, we, we've moved on just like everybody else has. You mentioned the weeks leading up to training camp, how important of a time that is for those players to continue to stay in shape. Do you keep in touch or keep in yeah. contact with them? How, how much did you kind of touch base with them over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I mean, I just think that, you know, it's always good just to check in on guys, check in on coaches. Um, I think our staff does a great job of that. Um, I, I try to do it as well, just just to check in with guys. Some guys are here um, that you see them in the building. Some guys, some guys aren't. Most of them aren't. You know, I mean that that's we understand that. But the ones that are here, I see uh, over the summer, um, and by all accounts, I mean from what I watched uh, the conditioning test, you know there was a lot of conversations going on. So if guys can talk while they're they're running 20, uh, 60. Striders, then, then it probably was pretty easy. Because you have so many new receivers and tight ends on the team this year, will it, will it be a point of emphasis to try and get uh, Ryan acclimated with all those guys throughout this camp? Well, he's only going to be able to, you know, there's only one football, and so, you know, we'll try to work the rotation and, and such. I mean, we, we kind of have an idea, um, you know, whether, you know, Austin Hooper and that relationship that they, they formed over minicamp. I'm sure they'll hopefully pick up where they left off, and you know we'll add Robert to the mix, and you know Traylon, and then Dez, and all the rest of the receivers, and try to rotate through and, and give them all an opportunity to compete and, and see see who um, can build a role for themselves for this football team. You have mentioned not relying on talent. Mm -hmm. So from a coaching perspective, with Tim Kelly coming in, how is that going to work as far as him working with Todd Downing and? even Coach O'Hara and everyone else that's involved in, in putting passing plays together. Yeah, um, and really I, we've always had, you know, we've always had somebody in place here. Um, you know, Matt, you know, had um, had Arthur and Arthur had Todd. And 
um, the fit was right. You know, haven't haven't had um, experience with Tim. You know, everything that I've witnessed, the conversations um, that that they're having when I when I see it or I'm in on those meetings. Um, you know, it, it's about support and it's about, um, you know, it's always nice to have an extra set of eyes, maybe from 30,000 feet, maybe that you, that you miss something, you're staring at something so long that you kind of miss it. You know, I think Tim, by not having a specific position, you know, will be able to, to help us and assist us that way. Can you expand on the, the talent thing? Everybody's obviously talented to a certain degree. Yeah, that's what this National yeah, Football League is. And I'm, I just, I, I don't want to just roll the ball out there and say, well, Let's hope if we have bet, the better players, you know, um, that that's why we come to work is to try to find ways to to develop guys, to give them one more thing. I got it. You know, I mean, if you can find one way to make Kevin Byard play better than he did last year or Jeff Simmons or Derrick Henry, Ryan, I mean, every single player that that's our job as coaches. So, you know, I just that, that's a, I just don't want to have a cop out and say, well, you know they're better. I don't buy that. You know, I mean, it's we're all every every team is talented, and so uh, we, we want to teach them. We want to give them the the knowledge to be able to go out there and do their job, uh, and and most especially give them the confidence to go out there and do their job. How much you talk to the guys, maybe younger guys, about the highs and lows of camp, and not get too. Yeah, you know, I mean, Caleb Farley had two interceptions yesterday, and I'm like, that's great. You know, what I mean, and then we're going to practice in another couple of days. I'm, I'm glad you found the football, and it's exciting, uh, those small victories. But it's just one day in, in a long process, and, and knowing that there's going to be uh, adversity, uh, which we're all going to have to face. There's going to be something, and, and can, we, can we still be at our best um, when it's not going our way? After four years, do you – have a different approach to these practices in terms of what you do and what you're looking at specifically, or like has that evolved much over the years? Um, I mean, I'm looking for, you know, for fundamentals. I try to watch and make sure that the drills that we're doing uh, translate to the team, and then it's really cool to be able to show the player the drill we just did. This is the same action that you had, but it's 11 on 11. This is why it's so critical that you make the corrections or that you continue to do it right in the individual period. Uh, I, I look at that, you know, I think that that's always a cool message to show the players like, while well, you guys are over here about doing this drill, this is the exact same thing that you did 20 minutes later or 30 minutes later in the team period. It helped you, helped you do your job. Um, you know, making sure that the, the guys are, are moving around, running, that we're, we're running on and off the field, you know, that the operation is clean, that we, you know, we've got, you know, that we're efficient and, and that, that we, uh, we have some urgency when we're out there practicing. That, that's my job. Which quarterback did Caleb pick off twice? I don't remember. I just, I don't remember. They, they were good plays and, you know. They were. They were. I don't think they realized how long he was. I don't think I did either. You know, I mean, it's, you know, we you know, you got Roger and, uh, you know, Caleb's certainly a much longer corner. Uh, than, than we've had here in, in a while. So when his arm, when he when he stretches out his arms and uh, jumps, it covers some ground. Is third field ready to go? Not quite yet. Not quite yet. We need a little bit more heat and a little bit more water, and uh, it'll be fantastic. So we'll be working on one and two um, until that thing is is ready to go. But it's going to be it'll be great once we once we get it done. Looking forward to having fans later this week. Yeah, looking forward to having fans. Looking forward to having families. You know, I mean, I miss that. I miss when, when the boys would come to training camp. I miss when the kids would come to training camp. And then, you know, I love seeing the kids run around with their, with their dads uh, after practice. So I'm excited. I'm excited to get that back. Um, before I get started here with questions, uh, two things. I uh, wanted to offer our condolences to uh, the family of Mark Howard. Um, you know, tragic uh, loss there. I know many of you were friends with him. I didn't have many interactions with him, but I know that um, every time that I was on with him, he was extremely respectful and, and always professional. So thoughts and prayers go out to, to the family and, and friends of his. And thanks to our staff and the time that was put in, you know, prepping the facilities here for training camp, our ops team, our equipment staff, Brown's team, there was a lot of man hours uh, that went into getting uh, the field and stuff ready uh, here for us to uh, 
rock and roll. So with that, we'll open up for questions. We've got uh, Ryan Cowden here, uh, our Vice President of Player Personnel. So um, fire away. John, were you guys able to come up with some solutions, you know, I guess uh, uh, physically, medically, whatever you want to say, for, for Traylon Burke since, since minicamp, and do you expect him to be, you know, ready to roll? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, he did a nice job in the, in the conditioning test. He's been out here for a couple of days and, and has been running around uh, running around well and uh, made a couple of plays. So um, certainly excited with the uh, trajectory that, that he's on and, you know, we'll take it day by day. And, you know, bumps and bruises happen during training camp. Hopefully we don't have too many. Mike said that uh, he expects Jeffrey to be out there tomorrow. Um, is there anything going on contract-wise with him? Um, no, I mean, we, I talked to agents with uh, a lot of our a lot of our players. Uh, I've talked with his representation, and uh, we've got an understanding of where we uh, where we're at. And um, you know, he's excited to be back and, and and ready to rock and roll. Where you are, anywhere close to a new deal, or are you proceeding under the current terms? Yeah, we don't really talk about contracts, and you know, I've said that before. I think that's a that's a matter between the club and and the agent and the player, and um, that's how that's how we'll keep it here. John, would you consider redoing a deal with, with a, another year and then an option year after that left on it still? Yeah, philosophy-wise, uh, philosophy again, I don't want to dive too much into, into contracts and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, everything's a case-by-case -case basis. Um, um, but, you know, I would say that, you know, again, we're not going to talk about where we're at from a contract standpoint. When the, when the guy like Buster Screen decides at the last minute here to retire, you sort of expect that each year, or is, or is that is that a bit of a shock to the system, and, and, and cause you to regroup somewhere? No, you, you you know you never really really know, David. It's it was, I was so proud he was a part of our team last year after every game, I and mean, we we signed him midseason. Um, he came in and contributed for us. You know, as a guy that I think he's got 11 years in the league, and the smile on his face and he gave me the biggest hug after every win and was like thank you so much for the opportunity um but you never know where where guys are at you know health wise and and where they're at you know with the game and uh wish him nothing but the best you know, he was he was a great teammate he worked hard you know it's kind of an old soul that you know showed up every single day and was was productive for us so i wish him nothing but the best moving forward as far as for the spot you know, we're you know Ryan and I have, have met with personnel st personnel staff this morning, kind of talking through some things, and um, I'm sure we'll have some guys you know here in the next you know couple of days that that'll you know, be on the workout circuit with us. Do you do you say we need to get another cornerback, or do you look and say we've got an opportunity to get this guy who's a good player at this position? Uh, I think it's probably more the the first, you know, just from a, a standpoint of numbers. You know, you know, Mike and I have a. a a number that we like to have at each position uh, every time we go into training camp. So um, I think it's probably m more DB than, than than the latter. Are there lessons, John, that you learned from the one and done over the last two years organizationally that can be applied now going forward that can help you avoid that? Yeah, I think every situation is, is unique. You know, I think that you, know, you, you, you evaluate the player, you get as much information as you can and um, you know, sometimes they, they work out well and, and, and sometimes they, you know, they, they don't. Um, and we claimed Zach Cunningham at the end of the season last year, who wasn't playing a whole lot for Houston, um, but had, had really productive games and, and played a lot. You know, obviously we played against him and he came in and was great for us. And we're excited that Zach's back. So I think every situation is unique and every situation is different. But you, know, you certainly look at the things that when it does work out, Okay, well, why did that work out? You try to ask yourself, and you know why did why did it not work out? And, and you obviously try to not go back down the road where it didn't work out, and, and focus more on the on the times that it did. Yeah, right, can you speak broadly to, to that theme of, of the ending of the last two years, and maybe what the organization learns, what you learn? Well, I mean, I think the process for us is is player acquisition is such a a broad scope, right? Whether that comes from the college, or the pros, the street, from other teams, from waivers, trades. Um, and I think what we went through last year was a testament not only to the, the process that we put in place from the personnel side, but it's a collaboration because we may identify a player that, that fits characteristics or traits that we believe fit our program, but it's a collaborative effort from the coaches to get that player ready that week, from the trainers to add a new person to find out what that's about, um, the weight staff equipment. It's such a big 
process to get all those guys in. And, and I think for us, it's just trying to find each and every one of those guys that, that fit both on the field and in the locker room as best they can. John, you guys have been saying about wanting to be great around Ryan. Now, Mike says he doesn't want to be a coach that relies on talent. But as somebody whose job is to uh, get the talent and make a great roster, where would you say you feel like your roster is comparatively to last year around Ryan? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what all of the, the video game rankings have us, you know, that have been posted over the last two weeks. Uh, I don't know where we stack up on that ranking, but um, I like the camaraderie of the group. I like the trajectory of the group. You know, I thought we made some strides, uh, certainly in the spring in the OTAs, and it looks like we were off to a pretty good start here you know, the last couple of days with these, these young players. So, Go ahead, John. Are, I'm sorry. Uh, the uh, positions maybe that are, that are still kind of open, maybe some, some question marks. Mike talked about you know, the two spots in the O-line. I guess how long, ideally, do you take a look at those guys? You, know, you hope you, the, the starters are here. But you know, how long do you give that before saying they either are or, or we need to still look around? Well, I mean, it's got to be a couple of weeks. You know, we, we've got to get pads on. And, I mean, these linemen haven't had pads on since, you know, a year whenever the college guys finished. Um, so you got to see those guys, you know, actually put football pads on and, and run football plays. So um, you, you've got to be a little conscious of, of that. Um, the new players with the terminology, you know, offensively, uh, defensively. We've got a lot of players back on defense, so that carryover terminology-wise and staff consistency certainly helps. Um, but at some point, they're going to have to be able to do their job or, or not be able to do their job. And uh, if they can't, then we've got to, you know, with somebody on our team, on our current roster that can do the job. And if not, then then Ryan and I got to go to work and try to find somebody out there that can. In so regards what is to Traylon the, Burks, uh, his head coach, Sam Pittman, has said that he wasn't aware of the asthma issue, but that there were conditioning issues initially that he worked out. Is that something that you guys got to talk to him about? Is the asthma a new thing that you didn't no, was on the surface before. Yeah, I mean, I think Traylon was pretty transparent with us when, when we brought him in here and, and, and talked to him. And, you know, he admitted that he had some stuff in, in college that he needed to, he felt like he needed to be better at. And, um, you know, I, I would say that he's attacked um, the time that he's been here um, and gotten himself ready to go out and perform. Um, and, he, and it certainly showed the work that he's put in over the last you know, two days he, that he's been here early, uh, that he's ready to roll. What is, what is the dialogue like, whether it's between you and Ryan, you and Mike, all of you together during camp? Is it a couple of times a day uh, looking at and do you talk about certain players, certain positions? How, how did that kind of transpire? I'll let Ryan go first. It's pretty much all day. Like, we, you know, especially for John and I, now a lot of times with, with coaches' responsibilities, it's hard to talk to every little department. So, you know, you have this little chain of command, or chain of communication, I should say. Um, where John and Coach can get together, and then he can get with me and my staff, and we can work through the things that we need to get at. But in terms of John on the personnel side, I mean, it's it's multiple times throughout the day. I mean, the offices are 10 feet apart. Um, there's always going to be something that comes up, um, whether it's little, big, whatever, or just thinking forward, um, whether it's planning scouts, uh, planning preseason scouting, you know, changes in processes. So that's a, that's a constant communication, Jim. Was I guess last year when you, when you guys kind of build that ready list, mm -hmm. play with 91 guys, and to see some of those guys have the success that they had. Sure, obviously you wouldn't. That wouldn't be the ideal situation, right? But as I stated earlier, yeah, you might say, "How'd you find this guy?" or "What? How, what did you see in this player that made you think he'd be successful in your program?" That's just one part of it. But but the collaboration from the coaches being willing to get that guy ready on short notice, the trainers, like I said, having how do I get this guy? What's his health background? What's what works best for him? And then really the player. The player has a huge responsibility upon himself to be ready to help the football team. So we are we are a part of it in terms of identifying and hoping to bring in the right guys that that fit the fabric of the players we want to bring in. But then once they're here, it's so much about the rest of the organization, the other parts, and the player himself taking that opportunity and running with it. John, when you see, John, when you see the when you see the these rookies out here. And you've gone through, you guys and your staff have gone through the evaluation process of seeing what they can do and can potentially be. Mm -hmm. As a general rule, how soon do you know when a guy is ready to make that move versus a guy like, say, Dylan Radens last year that was going to need some time to develop and work through? Yeah, that's a great question, Terry. I think it's, it's really different for, for every player. 
Um, you know, Dylan was a player who, who came from a, a smaller school um, who was affected by the COVID year, had really only played one game, and then he played in the Senior Bowl. So he hadn't played – I mean, he had played football, but, you know, the recent history certainly wasn't extensive. And um, he worked at it last year and worked at it last year, and I thought he made some really good strides in, in this offseason. So I think it's different for, for different players, you know, just kind of how quickly they – um, simulate themselves to our program and how quickly they can go out and perform. What kind of do you see it? Do you know when the light see? goes on for those guys? Can you tell it from an evaluation process? Yeah, sometimes, and it's, it's different because sometimes it's it's instant, and then other times we'll be sitting in there watching tape and we're talking, and it's like, all right, he's, he's coming on, you know, or, or vice versa. It's, you know, it's like, eh, he's not quite there yet, you know. Um, it's different. It doesn't always seem like a, I'm going out there to win this job no matter what kind of guy. Um, when he puts his hand in the grass, do everything he can to try to block his guy. Like, that's his most important job. There's a lot that goes into that. Um, but he, he, Dylan is a guy that's that's in here early. He's one of the first guys in the building every day. Uh, I know he's extremely um, it's extremely important to him. Um, you know, I don't, maybe his personality isn't that one to be outgoing and, you know, I'm going to go chew through rebarb. Um, but it, it's extremely important to it, and you can see that uh, in the time that he puts in in this building. John, how have you seen uh, Malik acclimate to this program uh, since he arrived in, in the spring? And knowing that Ryan is your guy this season, what, what kind of strides, what would you like to see him kind of make up behind the scenes and as we get into preseason games? Yeah, I mean, he, he's coming in, he's learning a, a totally new, new offense. He's throwing to, to new players. Um, from a timing and, and decision-making standpoint, calling the play in the huddle, uh, taking command of the huddle when he's in there, whoever you know, whoever's in the huddle with him, uh, showing that leadership which he's shown. Um, you know, I, I thought that he 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 put the ball where it was supposed to be most of the times during the spring. There were some timing things that you know, he's got to continue to try to improve on. But another guy that's really worked um, worked hard uh, in the off season, certainly when they were here, and. Um, you know, he's had a good couple of days here. John, from a long-term standpoint, how do you balance Derrick Henry's uniqueness to the reality of what happens to running backs with high workloads as they approach the age of 30? Yeah, I mean, I think that that's a um, – he's – Derrick's been, been awesome for us. You know, he's been – he's a volume guy. You know, he, he wants the ball. That's his, that's his mindset. Um, and um, he, he likes it. He likes it when we give it to him. And, uh, you know, that's a balance that you have to, you know, from a coaching standpoint with trainers, with the strength coaches, um, just figure out what's best for the football team. And that goes with any position. Um, you know, how much, are, how much is that guy going to be out there um, if and or when you have a chance to get him out of the game? Um, do, you, do you do that? You know, because the most important thing is availability of the player, a lot of times more so than, than the ability of the player. Ryan, How long Ryan. can you do that for with Derek? Oh, I, I, I have no idea from a timeline standpoint. Everybody's, you know, built different. Some guys play till they're, you know, 30-something. Guy in Tampa is still 40-something and still throwing it. So everybody's different. Going back to what Mike said earlier about he, he doesn't want to rely on talent, and we've seen him coach guys up to, to play well beyond maybe what expectations were. Does that put more onus on you to maybe say, I, I know you can get this out of this guy, but we still need somebody better than that guy? I think that we're all, you know, Ryan and the personnel staff, we're, we're always trying to get, obviously, the, the most talented players uh, in here as, as possible. And we've got talented guys in here. Um, but we, we tell the team, it's, it's and, and we'll say it again tonight, it's about the right 53 guys. At the end of the day, it's about the right 53 guys being on your team. And sometimes that may not be the most talented 53 guys because there's a lot that goes into a football team. It's the makeup of the person. It's, you know, how hard does he work? How healthy is he? Um, what is his skill level like? Um, yeah, they're, they're, all of that weighs into, you know, the overall profile of the player and how they fit in with our football team.
when I guess there were two days, a lot more work on the practice field now, not as much. When Jim, like way back? <laughs> I guess way back when you had a bigger, much bigger sample size to judge these guys. From I team. can remember uh, it was one of my early training camps. It was must have been we had just drafted Will Fork in in New England, and he had obviously played at Miami and been a great player. And Vince is a good friend, and. I can. We had these stairs that went up to the field, and we did three a days uh, before there were rules in place. And he was coming down the stairs, and he looked at me and he said, "J. Rob, this is the hardest thing I've ever been through." And talking about a guy that had played at the U with all of those dudes in that heat, and um, it's different now, you know. And, and we have to be mindful of the players, and I think our strength and conditioning staff. And Todd and his group do a great job with cold tubs, with the Dormitex, trying to get their bodies right so that they can go out and perform in the windows. And we take advantage of the walkthroughs um, where you can get the mental reps of the play, um, but take a little bit of less, you know, take some load off the actual, you know, bo bones. Just for any of you guys, about uh, Roger McCreary, did you see uh, a, a decent amount of, of him inside in college, or was he more strictly? outside and, and I guess how would that translate? Yeah, he, um, if you looked at his snap breakdown, the majority of his snaps were outside, but he had exposure playing inside, uh, whether it's a traditional nickel or a little bit just inside in the box, inside the core a little bit. Um, but Roger, wherever you put him, you, you didn't see a real difference in his play style, both from a, a confidence of where he lined up to his level of competitiveness. It, it didn't really, you didn't see a difference. Some guys might look a little timid, they're thinking in there and moving. But in terms of what Auburn asked him to do, he played a little bit of both, uh, majority of those being outside. But certainly the, competitive, the competitiveness level and his production level didn't seem to differentiate. Brian, for you, for you as, as an evaluator, when you have a guy like McQuarrie, like the big thing, the short arms, mm -hmm. but he's still ball. Like, how do you go about matching up traits to what you see, uh, to what they've already done, and then projecting that? Sure. Like, we all want the perfect prototype at every position, right? The, give me the height, the length, the speed, and everything. But um, it's not how it goes. We don't get everything. And I think when you look at, when you look at guys, you know, John alluded to it a little bit earlier. Coach alluded to it about, you know, wanting guys that may not always have the most talent. Not to say Roger isn't super talented. But if you say the short arms things that followed him around, well, how many people caught the ball on him? How many times is that a factor? How many times was he in phase at the top of the break to mirror the, the footwork of the receiver so there is no window to pass the football in? How good is the technique of stabbing through the pocket, you know, to, to really be perfect in a technique to allow him to overcome something that may be deemed as a deficiency when, in fact, it's maybe not so. One of my favorite. When you interviewed with teams this offseason, Virginia Jobs, how, how intrigued were they, interested were they in, in the process you guys went through that allowed you to be successful with 91 players? Um, that did come up, you know, I, I was, first of all, I was fortunate enough to be included in those processes and, and honored to be included in it. And I think um, it was something that, that came up a couple of times. And there's no magic elixir, like there's not some magic formula. We, we try to stick to the principles that we, we've talked about through our pro department and our college department. And however many times it's been said, as much as we can, it's so much about the right fit versus maybe the most talented fit, if that makes sense. Not to, not to repeat that, but that's, that's a real thing about this program and has been since we've been here. Um, so that, that did come up, and I think that was some questions, and it was, it was just trying to believe in your processes. On those, on those traits you're talking about, Ryan, with Roger, with, with Caleb, if he can get through everything, how close is he to being that prototype? You know, on paper, he has a lot of those, right? That's what, what we talked about, the length. I think Coach alluded to it earlier about his length is unique. Um, you know, it, it's just we'll see. If you if you said on paper, draw big, long, fast, and athletic, sure. But then it's about what do you do out there, you know? So I don't know if that really answers your question, but sure, you'd pick that if you're going to pick one out of hat. If you're playing pickup on the, you know, outside, I'll take him, and we'll see where it goes. One of my favorite questions with these uh, guys in the spring at the Senior Bowl or, or at the Combine, um, the, the corners, I'll say, what do you think is the most important traits to be successful in the National Football League? And they're like, well, it's my pedal, it's my transition, it's my speed, it's my this. They'll rattle off, I don't know, 14 different characteristics. And I said, I'll look at them and I'll say, nope. You got two jobs. One, don't let your guy catch the ball. 
and two, tackle the guy that's got it. And then they look at me like, you mean it's that's Well, all of the stuff that you talked about is hopefully going to help you do those things. So, sorry, ad lib into your question, Joe. <laughs> Speaking of the other Caleb, your, your uh, shoot at, um, is his injury significant enough that you think you'll have to bring in somebody else for competition, or, or is he you know, maybe going to be able to, to get out there and compete himself? Shortly? Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, he's, he's, doing, he's doing okay. With Caleb Farley, he obviously had struggled with injuries last year, um, but coming back this year, Mike said he's at 90% right now. How does he get to 100, and how does he live up to those uh, first-round expectations? Uh, well, the expectations would be go out and, and play his position and, and help the team win. That would be the expectation. Um, you know, just continue to continue to work. Um, like most rookies, you know, they had this, I think, perception of what the NFL is. And then when you get here and you get in our program, it's it's there's a little bit of whoa. And um, you know, Caleb's battled through that. He's matured a ton. Um, just way, the way he carries himself around the building. It's it, he's got some confidence to him, and uh, I'm excited for him. He's had a great off season, and he's off to a great start here in the first two days. Does Traylon have to replace AJ, or is that an unfair expectation? Traylon's got to get open, catch, and block. Like he's going to line up at receiver and and get open, catch, and block. And and when we throw it to him, try to run with it, and as far as he can run until somebody tackles him. you look back at that, is any of that as being something that could have been prevented, or is it just bad luck? Do you change anything as a result of that? No, I don't. I don't know what you. I don't know what you. You change. You know, between. Um, I've looked at it nine million times, and and the list of players that we had on the team when we started, and then, you know, where we were mid-season and where we were kind of at the end, and just kind of the way things. When things fell, I mean, we got bit pretty hard by it, but we were over. We were able to, you know, kind of overcome it and continue to push through and, and have a winning season. Obviously, it didn't finish the way we wanted it to, um, but that can be said for you know 31 other teams too. Um, but we certainly look at you know the, the injuries that we had, and um, you know there are things that we can do different. Um, have those discussions, but I think a lot of it was just, you know, it's it's a violent game. Played by big, fast, strong men, and um, those things happen. You find meaning sometimes when you're when you're scouting and what guys do in seemingly unimportant moments. Do, do you like to see your top guys at positions go to the front of the line in drills and kind of lead from there? Say, I'm going first. Watch me. I I think that may, maybe that was the case, you know, 20, 20 years ago, um, Paul. But I think I think it's just different now. I think guys are just trying to get the reps and. Um, you know, do the things that, that they need to do to get themselves ready to go out and have good practice, and hopefully that translates to a game. Um, um, guys' personalities are different. I think that that was, you know, when I was an average uh, college player, I was never at the front of the line. Sometimes I would jockey to try to get up there, but at the end of the day, I was just trying not to get yelled at by the coach and just try to do a good job. So. <laughs> Corner what position, Paul? Maybe three technique. I'm trying to lose a little weight. Maybe play outside linebacker. Tannehill talked about when we spoke with him how much the playoff loss affected him, and we obviously saw your reaction. That's to that tough. At the Thanks, Steve. You guys. Uh, or Chris. Or. <laughs> did you did have you did you and him have any discussions face to face or over the phone with each other just about reconciling all that? With Ryan. Yeah, I mean it was tough for both of us, and I, you know, we talked, and you know, at at, at some point you got you got to move on. You know, it's uh, you know we're 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 on to this season, and uh, it's a it's a new team. Um, he's excited, I'm excited. Um, another opportunity to play in this league, um, greatest sport in the world, in my opinion, and um, you can't just let it continue to fester. At some point, you just you've, you've got to turn the page and 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 go on. What's the additions? that are here with Austin, Robert, Traylon. Do you think that the offensive skill positions around Ryan are currently better than they were where you ended last season? I think I answered that earlier with the uh, Madden rating questions, but like it's it's, it's different. It's about if, if they play in unison and, and it's so much about timing and there's concepts offensively that you're trying to create and get guys open. It's just, you know, guys get open differently. Um, 
but I'm excited about the position groups and the guys that we have and the work that they've put in uh, to be ready for camp. Last, when last year, yeah, you, you were saying how like at some point you have to move on in regards to um, kind of what happened last year. In terms of Ryan's mindset, what have you seen um, that, that suggests to you that, that he can and, and that he's kind of ready to, to embrace the challenge of, of this season? Juice, energy, leadership, um, fired up to be out here. Um, working with the new new players that are on the team about, hey, when you run this route this way, look for the ball because this is what I'm looking for out of you on this certain route. Um, uh, he's into it and ready to roll. John, when you were hired, the idea was to help get this franchise back into winning ways, six straight winning seasons. Where is this franchise at and what has to be accomplished next? Keep winning, Teresa. Keep winning and, and try, to, try to punch a ticket into the – um, into the tournament and, and, and see, see, where, see where we go uh, with that. Um, but the only way to do that is to come out tomorrow and have a good practice. Um, I'm not a really look down the road at where we need to end. It's about because the only way you're going to get there is working hard tomorrow and, and trying to have a better day tomorrow than you had today and, and, and carrying that on. Um, having good practices with the Bucks, with the Cardinals, uh, executing in the preseason games. Um, we've got to cut the roster down. It's always a not so fun day for me is to tell, you know, guys they can't be here, at least on a short go, and then they maybe end up back on the practice squad. Um, but it's the first game, you know, getting ready for the, for the Giants. And uh, you got to win that one and, and move on to the next one and try to win that one and move on to the next one. That's the only way you're going to get to, you know, where you want to be. Last one. For the offense, what will it take, both of your perspectives, for them to make a jump like the defense did last year? And how can you get that started immediately, like right now, tomorrow, or what happened? Uh, I, I think continuity, you know, getting on the same page. I think we saw some of that uh, with the players that were out here in this offseason because we had some new faces, you know, certainly in that mini camp, whether it was Austin Hooper, whether it was Chig, um, you know, Robert was coming back, Traylon was dealing with his stuff. But getting on the same, I thought Ryan developed a really cool, you know, vibe with, with Chig and with Hoop, um, and certainly Swain, he threw the ball at, to him a lot last year. I thought that, that that progressed really quickly throughout the spring, doing the same thing with those receivers. I thought Nick Westbrook had an outstanding spring. I thought Dez took some steps in the spring. Um, getting Derek back will be, will be, you know, be great for us. Um, but continue to build on that continuity um, and, and stringing plays together. Yeah, I, nothing to add, really. I mean, I, I think that when guys are out there together is when you get the most work. If it's two guys missing this day, four guys missing, you know, so that's, that makes it hard. And I think the more confident, the, you see that confidence come through when guys have put a lot of hours and reps. You know, the old 10,000 hour rule of if you can get those guys out there together as a group, the more you get them out there, the more confidence they're going to have in each other. And I think that would translate into some, some success.